Welcome to a podcast named Tim. Uh, my name is Zach, and in today's Bad Batch review, we're doing episode four entitled Cornered. Uh, before we get into the review, please do give the video a thumbs up and, of course, subscribe. Uh, that way you don't miss any f- other of our uh, Bad Batch reviews, other Star Wars uh, related content like book reviews, working on Thrawn, uh, Ascendancy, The Greater Good, currently uh, working our way through that. And we also have Power Rangers reviews and movie reviews as well. So lots of entertainment. So again, please do give the video a thumbs up and subscribe. So uh, Star Wars The Bad Batch Episode 4 uh, was probably the weakest of, of the episodes we've had s- uh, so far. There's still some good stuff there, obviously, but um, it just, uh, it's just, it's still good, just the weakest. Nothing wrong with that. Not everything can be 10 out of 10. So uh, the episode, basically, the uh, crew is uh, looking to find a place to hide out, but they need some rations, so they decide to land on Pantora, which is the uh, closest planet. Uh, it was weird because when I think of Pantora, I always think of that one uh, episode that they had where they were on the snow moon planet uh, back in the Clone Wars. So when they got to the planet and it wasn't covered in snow, at first I was like, wait, I thought Pantora was this, but it's another planet. Um, and while they're there, they are they have to, to bribe off a, uh, a docking official, which is great because they don't know how to do it. They're still learning kind of how to be uh, kind of uh, scum and villainy in some respects. They're used to just doing the military thing. So that was interesting. And um, basically they're breaking off into teams. Echo and Hunter and Omega are going out to get the rations. Wrecker and Tech are going to fix the ship, specifically scrambling some kind of uh, key on there so that uh, basically they can um, change the the signature of of the ship. Uh, while Echo and Hunter and Omega are out, uh, they end up uh, basically scamming a, a shop owner by pretending that Echo is a droid. And it created a great little bit where Echo was uh, upset with how much he was being offered for his for his uh, uh, his services. He thought he was worth a lot more. So that was a fun little bit. Uh, probably one of my favorite parts of the episode, actually. And also, uh, while they're out and about, we see that there is a, a bounty hunter after them, and it's Phoenix, Phoenix Shan, uh, which of course got her name from the Mandalorian, and uh, ended the season uh, of uh, Mandalorian two. Season two, she ended with uh, Boba Fett, of course, uh, promoting that with that great last shot of the book of Bo- Boba Fett. More on that in a moment. So uh, she is obviously doing some bounty hunter stuff. She is looking for Omega and uh, easily finds her. Omega accidentally runs off uh, chasing a toy. And then it is up to the the rest of the Bad Badge team to find her and and rescue her. And there's a great action sequence, a lot of stuff down in uh, like down in a a sewer on top of a building on speeders on, uh, you know, all that stuff. So uh, but she is rescued. They do get off planet with the assistance of some of the droids that uh, Echo was hanging out with, and um, and uh, they're they're off for their for their next adventure. But the most important part about this episode and the thing that it's really going to launch is uh, we now have another um, main aggressor. I don't, I'm not going to say a villain yet, but we have something else to push the uh, the story forward and to create tension with with the Bad Batch, and that's Fennec Shan. Again, she is a bounty hunter. And we're, we're left to, f- to wonder and ponder who has hired her. Um, I think I've seen a lot of people say the Kamen Owens, which would make a lot of sense because it appears that uh, they are looking to get Omega back for whatever kind of testing or use they want her for. Uh, so that would certainly be a, an easy possibility. A thought occurred to me um, that it, and this is kind of get into fan theory territory and speculation but um what if it's boba fett what if he he as also a clone himself is interested i don't know how he would know but what if he's interested in clone force 99 and omega as you know because they're different like him in some respects and obviously that could explain why boba fett would later in the mandalorian save fennec shan and they would be uh, as close to each other as they were. Maybe she did him this solid by 
uh, looking up or doing this job for him. Just a thought, again, wild speculation, but overall, again, not my favorite episode. I'm curious to see when we're going to get Rex. I would imagine that'll be here in the next couple weeks. But, um, but uh, you know, the, the the crew is still learning. They we, we got a lot more stuff with the, the Empire chain. We got, you know, a lot more of the Empire uh, turning over, although some of that was repetitive from earlier episodes. But we see that the crew is learning how to... to act in the civilian uh, world how to how to scam people how to get rations how, how life is going to be different so this is much more about their transformation this episode than i guess the empire's transformation so let me know your thoughts on the uh the episode and who you thought uh has hired finnick shan uh, you think it's the Cameron owens you think it's boba fett you think it's someone else uh let me know in the comments below happy to talk star wars always Uh, So again, I'm Zach. Please do like, share, and subscribe, all that good stuff. And we'll see you next time here on a podcast named Tim.